What's up? My name is Kay and today I'm going to be talking a little about the top five things that I have learned since going vegan just over a year ago. So before I get into those top five things that I have learned, I'm going to give you a little bit of background into how I got to where I became vegan. But before I even do that, be sure to stick around and if you like what you see, press that like button down below and let me know what you think down in the comments. Also check out my channel and press that subscribe button to stick around and see more content like this in the future. So a little bit of background on how I became vegan. Back in late 2018, I watched the documentary Food Inc. on Netflix and that inspired me to cut back my red meat consumption and if I did eat meat for it to be organic. Then at the new year of 2019, I chose to go pescatarian meaning that I only ate seafood and no other meats. I did honestly, within that year of 2019, eat some like chicken wings and stuff and every once in a while, but most days I did eat more vegetarian and then dinners and stuff usually surfaced around uh, like salmon and tilapia and shrimp and stuff like that. And I liked that, but I knew that I wanted to do more. So, at the new year of 2020, I went vegetarian. So I cut out all meat and I was still eating cheese, dairy, eggs, and things like that, but just no meat. And I was pretty content with that. And honestly, what really pushed me to go the extra mile and full-fledged take the step to plant-based eating and veganism was my boyfriend. He at the time was trying to reach new health and fitness goals and it was doing some research. He watched the Game Changers documentary on Netflix, which if you haven't watched that, you should because it's just a cool, fun documentary to watch. Any hoozles, he watched that and he got inspired, did a lot more research, and he approached me with the idea of switching to a plant-based diet and going vegan. So I watched documentaries with him, we did some more research, and I was like, absolutely, let's do it. And he, from being a full-fledged omnivore, made the jump into veganism. Then Earth Day 2020 was our day that we went vegan and we have not looked back ever since. Alrighty, now to get into those top five things that I have learned since going vegan. Number one, but how do you get your protein? This is one of the number one things that people will respond to you and say whenever you're like, I'm vegan or I eat a plant-based diet. They're gonna be like, well, how on earth do you get your protein? Well, contrary to popular belief, you can get plenty of protein from a plant-based diet and you don't need as much protein as popular consumption likes to make out. I feel like this has started to become more well-known in the plant-based community, especially as options for plant-based proteins has really taken off. But things like beans and lentils and soy-based proteins and wheat-based proteins and veggies and all together make it really possible and easy to get plenty of protein on a plant-based diet. So long as you make somewhat of an effort to be consuming a well-rounded diet, you'll be getting the nutrients that you need. But how do I respond whenever people ask me, how do I get my protein? Well, let me ask you, how much protein are you getting every day from your diet? How many people can actually tell you the amount of protein, the grams of protein that they are getting and that they actually need to get every single day? I'm sure that some people can. Some people do know that information. Like, don't get me wrong. However, like I said before, popular consumption makes it out to where you need all of this protein. It's just protein this, protein packed, protein drink this, and blah, blah, blah. We get it, protein. And the number one way that protein is marketed is with animal products. Many people just don't understand that there are a lot of options out there and it is totally possible to get a good amount of protein with a plant-based diet. For example, over the past like two, three months now, I've been getting back into the gym, working on my fitness, you know what I mean? And uh, I haven't done anything to change my diet. I haven't been intentionally consuming more protein or altering what I 
have eaten at all and I have found that I'm gaining muscle pretty easily without putting a whole ton of effort in other than in the gym. <laughs> That's it. And so trust me, I'm getting plenty of protein and loads of fiber too. So don't you worry. Number two, how on earth do I cook fine substantial meals without any eggs, dairy, or meat? I am not going to sugarcoat this. It's not easy. It does take effort and discipline to learn how to cook and consume well-rounded plant-based meals. But the number one barrier to this is your mindset. Most all of society knows meals to be centered around a kind of meat. And then cheese and eggs and dairy in general is something that's commonly found in majority of what people eat. It's hard to imagine how one eats a meal without any of those things when that's all you've ever known. I had a very gradual transition into plant-based eating but my boyfriend went from full-fledged omnivore to plant-based diet overnight. And what made it to where he was able to make that transition and successfully keep on eating plant-based afterwards is because he put in the work, he did the research. He watched the recipe and the food videos, did research on how to get the nutrients that he needed with a plant-based diet. And he also made sure that he was, you know, going out there and finding recipes and cooking things that he knew that he would be able to enjoy and that were flavors and things that were familiar to him. And that is something that we worked on together and it inspired a newfound inspiration to get creative in the kitchen with what we were cooking and what we were eating. And it made it fun and enjoyable for us. And that was really the key. And it's okay to eat all of the meat substitutes. The less processed, the better, of course, but all of the chicken nuggets and uh, chorizo and beef and sausages, etc., that you can find as a meat substitute format are pretty damn delicious and really can help ease that transition into not eating meat anymore. I try my best to eat really well most days, but I love having my cheat days where I get to eat Morningstar buffalo nuggets, drown them in Dyer Ranch, and then finish off with some dessert, the most delectable of desserts, Oreo cookies. Number three, the navigation of shopping. I'll be honest, going to the grocery store as a new vegan is stressful and confusing. Where on earth are they hiding the tofu? Where could I possibly find nutritional yeast? And why are these meat substitutes on this side of the store when all these meat substitutes are on this side of the store? It took a while for me to learn how to navigate my local grocery store and figure out what options of products they had available to me. And also to see what other stores nearby and see if they had any other different variations of products as well. It was a learning curve that now, over a year later, has become second nature. It's definitely something that you can easily overcome. And I mean, honestly, <laughs> whenever COVID hit and everyone was panicking to get all of the meat and all the milk, I was straight chilling. As for all the other vegan products like toiletries and makeup, skincare, hair care, furniture, clothes, shoes, etc. I mean, like the whole nine yards, you can really try to, you know, buy all vegan. I didn't really start focusing more on those sorts of things until after I kind of accomplished the dietary aspect of like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do with my diet. Oh crap, I need more shampoo and conditioner. I should probably look into what kind of vegan options are out there for me. And that's kind of, you know, as I was like, oh, I need these or those things, I should go and look and see what's available and is a vegan. And so that was something that I kind of gradually picked up as I went and is something that I've gotten a lot better at and I'm still working on as well. Now, 
these sorts of products can get more expensive. Just like the meat substitutes at the store, it really depends on the brand and the products, but if you put in the effort to do the research and know what your options are and where you can go, then you can find something that's more affordable. And different blogs like, for example, Plant Based on a Budget are great resources for finding more affordable options and still be able to accomplish eating a plant-based diet. You vote with your dollars. When you choose to buy plant-based food and products, you are voting for the expansion of plant-based foods and products out there because you are creating that demand. Whenever you choose not to buy animal products, you are choosing to vote against animal agriculture. Your vote matters. How you spend that dollar matters. Number four, don't say the V word. It is no secret that the world is full of vegan haters. There is a no negative connotation with the word vegan and people assume that if you are vegan, you are some extremist tree hugging, celery munching, non showering snowflake. You can't help but experience the social ostracization of being vegan. And I honestly didn't really think that I was going to experience that as much as I actually have, especially because I have a, a few vegan friends and because I live in a community and in a place where there's a prolific vegan community. And so I was like, yeah, I mean, it probably really won't be like that much, but I've experienced in ways that I didn't really anticipate would happen. And it's not like people are calling me names or telling me that I'm too pushy about my beliefs or anything along those lines, but I have definitely felt guilty for being that person that has to be accommodated for whenever picking a restaurant or making dinner or for a family gathering. And I know that even if it's been outside of my knowledge that there's probably been instances in which I wasn't invited or was left out of things because they didn't wanna to have to accommodate around my being vegan. I'm not trying to throw a pity party or anything. I'm perfectly happy with my choices, but it is something that you have to deal with and it's something that you have to be prepared for. That is why it is so important to have and find a sense of camaraderie within a vegan community. Whether that be having a few vegan friends or by having at least like a friend or two that, although they might not be vegan themselves, enjoy eating a good plant-based meal. Even I've actually found that there's a few online vegan communities that have been really helpful and supportive. For example, on like platforms like Reddit or YouTube or different blog posts, whatever it is, it's really important to reach out and try to connect with people who are like-minded and have made this lifestyle choice like you have in order to be a happy vegan. In the world of vegan businesses and vegan content creation, it's common knowledge that plant-based is the safe word. By using the V word within your brand and or marketing, you are really going to limit yourself from the potential reach that you could have with all the people who aren't comfy with the V word. All the flexitarians, the people that would just wanna eat, live healthier, or incorporate a meatless Mondays, they're not going to be as inclined to go and check out your product or your brand or your business whenever you have branded yourself with the V word. This is somewhat of a polarizing topic within the vegan community and the vegan niche. A lot of the vegans that are vegan for the animals and the environment like to say that vegans who are uh, health vegans and do it more so for the nutritional aspect of a plant-based diet, they like to say that they aren't vegan enough. It's also kind of common to see vegans online saying that whenever you say plant-based instead of vegan, that you are limiting yourself to only being able to talk about the dietary aspect of veganism and that you, again, aren't being vegan enough. And to that, I say, shut the fuck up. Now hold up before you get your panties in a wad. Hear me out. Stick around for point number five, because you're gonna want to hear it. Number five, the alignment of my ethos. 
When people ask me why I am vegan, most of the time they would probably expect a single answer response. Like, I'm vegan for the animals or for the environment or for my health. But in reality, at least for me, being vegan is about attaining full spectrum holistic wellness. The environmental impact of animal agriculture and consumption is something that I continue to learn about and am fully passionate about. The suffering of sentient beings and human consumption and how it affects the ecosystems around the world is something that I stand up against by being vegan. Yes, I know that my nutritional and physical health are thriving because of all the goodness that I put into my body. And I'm working out and exercising to help my body reach its fullest potential and be healthy both physically and mentally. I feel good about what I am doing for myself and my body. And I feel good that I am doing right by the world in which I live. I love being vegan and I am happy being vegan. And I have found that being vegan has been just as beneficial for my mental health as it has my physical health. I am not only feeding myself with goodness, I am feeding my soul with goodness. That is why I full heartedly believe that what veganism is truly all about is full spectrum holistic wellness. I say that pretty people eat plants and that's really all about knowing that you are in alignment with what is best for your body, your mind, and your spirit. That's what it means to be pretty inside and out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you were able to relate to some of the points that I made and that you enjoyed listening to some of the things that I have learned in being vegan. So please, if you did like it, make sure to press that like button down below. Let me know what you think and give me your feedback down in the comment section and subscribe to my channel. Also subscribe to my blog, it's kaylinwester.com. That link is in the description below and my Instagram that's gonna be at Kaylin Wester and yeah just remember pretty people eat plants